Your Next.js project probably doesn't need auth, but pretty much every application that you build will rely on login and sign up at some point. Maybe you're working on a project for a client, or maybe you're just working on some side project for yourself. Either way, there are gonna be some features that require a user to be logged in first. So as a developer, it's really tempting to add login and sign up to the application really early on. Maybe you plan on using NextAuth or a service like Clerk or Kind, but my advice to you is to put off these decisions, put off implementing any sign up or login for as long as you possibly can in your application. Because it really doesn't matter if you're building a project for money or if you're just building some sort of side project for yourself, the thing that you should be working on are the most important core features of your application. And that definitely isn't user sign up and login. You need to be able to show the core features of your app play around with those and be able to modify them really early on. Because features always change and you really need to know the direction of the core features of your app before you focus on anything like login. So I'm gonna show you how to put off login in your Next.js application and even fake login if you really need a custom user experience. So here I have a social media app that I've been working on and it doesn't have any login features yet. I am able to view a list of these posts. I can view a single post. Uh, I can view a profile. I can even create a new post on this page, but I don't have any user auth features in this application just yet. What I have are some posts that I've created through the app and two users that I've created just to be able to test out these features. And the initial way of doing something like this is to just hard code a user ID everywhere. So here I have a profile page that displays the current user. So when I click this button, it takes me to the slash me page. This is my profile, the logged in users, the logged in users profile. And all I've done here is hard coded a user ID. So anytime I go to this page, I'm gonna be user one. And this allows me to test out this page completely as a single user. And then I have this create page here where I can create a new post. And here in the server action, I've done the same thing. So every single time I go to create a new post, I'm doing it as user one. But this still allows me to completely test out these features of the application without having to implement any sort of auth. Now we are gonna to get to a point when I want a little bit more control over this. I want to simulate what it's like to log in as a different user and create posts as different users without just having to hard code that ID in here. And this can be really easy to fake in any application, but maybe even more easy in a next application with server actions. So I'm gonna create a completely fake login system right now that won't take much time, but will allow me to develop some of these features. So I'm gonna create a new login page. So just login. And in here, I'll create a page.tsx. And really all I need is to export a default function that is gonna be the login page. In this page, I'm gonna want a login form that is gonna be a client component. So immediately I'm gonna create another component here. I'll just call it login form. And this will be my client component. And this one is going to have the actual form and it's a client component so that I can listen to the on submit event. I'm gonna see what Copilot gives me here. That seems very complex because I don't actually want a password or most of this stuff like forgot passwords. This just kind of goes to show all the features that you need to implement when you have a real login system. Um, my goodness. Okay, so I have this form. I'm just gonna import this login form into my page here, and then we can render that. And let's just see what this looks like. So I'm now gonna go to that login page. Okay, so that looks pretty bad, but whatever, it'll do for now. I also just want a button in here to submit the login form. Sign in, that's good. Okay. So basic form, sign in button doesn't look great. It will do for now. And I've chosen username here because the way I've got my users stored in the database is using a username. And I might change this in the future, I'm not really sure. But right now this is working for me. So I'm gonna use a username to kind of log in a user in a fake way. Uh, so I should be able to put one of the usernames of the existing users that I've created manually in the database. Uh, and then that will kind of log the user in. So the idea here is that when I submit this with the username, I'm gonna run a server action that is gonna store that data in a cookie that I can then use in the rest of my app. So in this folder, I'm also gonna create an actions.ts and I'm gonna export an async function called login that is gonna expect a username 
And sure, we can console log and return OK. And I'm going to import cookies from next slash headers. And this function will allow me to store this username in a cookie. So cookies is a function that I have to call and then I can call set username, username. Okay, so now if this function gets called, I'm just gonna store the username in a cookie. And since this is a server action, I should add use server to the top here. And then in my login form, I can import login from my actions and then on submit of this form, I'm going to need to handle the submit function, do all the client side stuff. So let's just do that quickly. Handle submit. Type the event. This looks fine. Uh, yep. Okay. But I'm actually going to use state for this. So uh, username set username. There we go. Uh, Got to import use state. Just basic. Uh, React stuff here. If this isn't making sense, the normal React things, check out my videos on use state and other React type stuff. Uh, but right here, I am going to on change. There we go. And the value will be username. Perfect. Okay. So now I should be able to pass the username into that server action right there. Uh, I'll make this an async function. Okay, so when I submit this form, we'll grab the username and we'll send it to the server to run the login function, which will just save that username to a cookie for now. We'll do a little bit more in a moment, but this is good enough for now. So I'm going to go back to my application and I'm going to open up DevTools and we can see that I currently have no cookie stored here. And then I'll just log in here with my name. And now a cookie has been created that has my username in it. So now if I went to another page and I wanted this kind of dynamic logged in behavior, uh, let's say, for example, I go to my profile page, I can do a similar thing. So I can import cookies from next headers, and then I could try and grab the username here. So cookies get username uh, value. There we go. Const username equals. Why doesn't it like that? It's not a method, it's a property. So, okay, so I have the username. Uh, and maybe I'll actually just dump this out at the top of the page for now. I'll do more with it in a moment. Uh, so if I'm logged in, if I'm, you know, fake logged in and I go to my profile page, I should be able to see my username displayed at the top of the page here. So all right, this is kind of confusing because everything was hard coded anyway, but this is the cookie, cookie username right there okay this one it's coming from that cookie and this is really basic just storing a username in a cookie but i think it's a really powerful technique and i'm gonna do a little bit more here because right now when i log in the username what i really need on every page is a user id and that makes sense because really i'm gonna query for a bunch of posts where the user id is the foreign key and it just makes way more sense to have a user id so in that server action i'm also i'm using drizzle so i'm just going to import my uh Drizzle database stuff and my users table. And don't worry, I'll keep this SQL short. As I'm saving the username, I'm also going to do a quick query to the database. It always gets these Drizzle queries wrong. Uh, almost though, where EQ username is username. So select the user. No, it's not, not even close to select from the users table where the users table dot username is equal to the username that was passed in here. Got to import the EQ. Okay, cool. So I can grab that user from the database. Uh, I should probably put this in a try catch. I'll deal with the error later. Um, but if I manage to grab that user from the database, it's actually going to grab a collection. So I'll just do uh, one more thing here. Grab the first item out of that collection. Okay, that looks fine. So if that user exists in the database, then I'll also set the user's ID as a cookie. Again, really, really basic stuff here. User.id. Cool. Okay. So now if I go back to that login page slash login, 
and I type in that username again, I should be able to sign in. It stores the username as a cookie, but it also stores that user ID. And I can see I have another user here called Ken. So if I sign in as Ken instead, I should see my cookies update to be that new username and that new user ID. So I'm now just storing a user's information in cookies when they log in, which is basically what real login is anyway, but I don't have to deal with passwords. I don't have to deal with all of the things surrounding like an email and password login. I don't have to deal with social sign up or any of that stuff. I am just doing the bare minimum so I can focus on the actual features that are important to this application while still creating some sort of customized experience that I can test out early on. So by doing this, I can now go to my profile page and instead of just displaying the same profile for every user, I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna go to my profile page and just do a really quick update here. So uh, I'm gonna say user ID is the user ID field. I can do a quick check. If there is not a user ID, then the user is not logged in and I can display a not logged in page or I could just redirect this user straight back to the login page, which is I think what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna import the redirect function from next slash navigation, I think. And then down here, we're gonna redirect to slash login. And then I'm done, okay. So if there's no user ID, we're gonna redirect to login. However, if there is a user ID, I know the user is logged in. So I can grab the user information if I need it. I can grab all the posts uh, that I wanna display on the page. I'll get rid of this weird cookie username thing. And now I should have a custom experience. It looks like I've done something wrong though. I accidentally deleted something here. That's fine. Okay, so now I should have a custom experience when I go to my profile page. However, it's saying I'm not logged in. So let's see here. If there is no user ID, but there is a user ID. So what did I do wrong? I misspelled user ID. Good job, Sam. Okay. So it was redirecting me because it thinks that I'm not logged in, but let's go, come on. Let's go back to the home page, to the me page. And there we go, that loaded correctly. So I can now really easily test out the profile page for different users just by going to that fake login page and logging in as a different user. And again, I would do the same thing for creating a new post. And again, I think this is a really powerful thing that allows us to focus on the core features of an app without having to worry about all this auth stuff because auth is not trivial. Getting auth working correctly in an application takes a lot of time and intent and you end up having to go with a library or a service to get it right, which is time consuming on its own, but it's also a decision that is worth putting off for as long as possible. At some point you will need to add a legitimate auth solution and I have some videos on that when you're ready.